Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Ramen Inc. is kind of like a roll and write, but you're drafting things as you're going through. You'll be writing them in on the different orders. And there's certain rules and certain eggs you want here and you want shrimp there. You want things to be in certain places and you're going to be drafting these with your um, co-conspirators around the table to try to score the most victory points as you're doing so. The game can be very, very tight. and As you're going through, it feels like you have a lot of options and you do, but as you start placing things on plates, your options become lower and lower and now you have to be a little more strategic or tactical about what you're putting down. And everything you have, you know, the perfect thing is card is going to come out every turn. You're going to have to work with what you have and so is everybody else at the table because you're playing off pretty much the same cards as you're putting it through. This is one of those hidden gems for me. This is a game that kind of surprised me with the decision space that it had and how much fun that we were having it as we were going through it. From the Look of it, just a small box. It wasn't something we thought was going to be something that we actually fell in love with, and, and maybe it wasn't, but it is a game that we like quite a bit. Trying to fit in all the orders and meeting all the specifications that the clients have was really fun as these cards are being drafted and coming up as they're being drawn from the deck. So the experience that we had was more enjoyable than we thought it would be. We felt like that it was tight. The tightness was for all players equally, and nobody really had an advantage in it. It was all about the decisions that you're making as it goes forth, and that was a winner for us. So Ramen Inc. will be a keeper. Here's Ramen Inc. It's a little small game and a box here that you can see. Uh, it fits pretty nice. It's going to have uh, a spot in here, which is really neat because the, it's going to be part of the game as you place this down. We have the rule book here, which we'll put aside. You're going to have these score sheets that you have, and there's plenty of them in the box. You can always laminate these or print more if you want, make copies. You're going to get four pencils, these little common pencils you see in a lot of games. A custom insert in here where I think fits pretty nicely. And you're going to have these circular cards. They're fairly thin. You have the octopus on the back. You can see the price and the items that are on there pretty easily. And there are the toppings that you're going to have. So these are pretty good. Not a real big fan of circular ones, but I think it works fine for this game. These are okay quality, nothing great, nothing to write home about, but they get the job done. So here's the rule book. It's fairly thick because of all the languages used. You open up to the language that you desire as you look through here. It makes it a little hard to reference. I think the font is a little tiny in here, but you can get through it. You do see the pictures in here. There aren't any examples really, mainly just pictures and kind of go over the rules. You can see the drawings we'll be putting in here. It tells you how to throw things away, the negative points that go with it, and how to score the game, etc. Then additional languages. The game is fairly easy to teach. I think you need about five minutes to teach it. I think to get through the rules here to read it, 10, 12, and you'll refer to this page. I kind of kept this page open. You can see the book kind of opens to that because I was using it so much, and it kind of gives you an idea of what's in it. Very good rule book. Not a lot of problems. Some examples might have helped a little bit, uh, but it's, it's hard uh, to fault us at all. You'll be able to play the game and be up and moving in no time. So to set the game up is pretty easy. You're gonna put your box out, and you're gonna go one, two, uh, three, four, five. You see the numbers inside, six, seven, eight. And those will be the order for the game. Now, we were playing this, we kind of found this a little bit hard, so we would take this out as long as everybody knew what the numbers are, you know, as long as you can see over it. These are the orders. This is what's gonna be required. So you have two of these and two of these. It tells you right here. It'll be worth seven dollars. Anything's two bucks, and you can kind of see this. You want uh, three of a kind, you get four bucks. So it tells you how much uh, dollars or points you'll score in the game and what is going to be required. After three rounds, this first one will come out and you'll score it. And this one after four and five, etc. So this will become less and less as the game goes on. You'll play the game for six rounds, and whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. So what's going to happen is, is you're going to turn over two of these and the players are going to be able to choose. Now, if you choose a two, that's fine. You only get two of these toppings and you can place them anywhere that you want on your board. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be filling this out. Now, once again, if you look here, this is going to correspond to the eight spots on the board. They're all equally numbered here. 
and just kind of put in the item. So if I wanted to put, if I chose this, put one of these and one of these, I could stick it on any one of those. Now, if you choose a three, obviously I'm gonna get one more item that I would have got with a two, but the restriction of this is they have to be adjacent. So like one, two, three, or I could do these three that they're adjacent, but I couldn't go like here and here and here because they would not be adjacent. And that's kind of the rub. So the two's gonna come out, each of the players are gonna pick one of these to utilize, and then a third one will come out that everybody has to use. You must use the third one, but the first two you get to choose from. That will continue for six rounds as you fill your board up. It may look something like this. Now there are some items you can throw away down here at the bottom. First couple are any negatives, but if you continue that, you get negative boards. And you can kind of see here, it'll tell you how many points you have. When like the third round, the first one will come out. Fourth round, this one will come out. Third round, this will come out. And the sixth one, you score it all. And you can see what you were able to get for each of the locations, as you can see here. This is what mine looks like. Um, this could be something you have. Now, when you fill up a location completely, you're able to get one of these goodies up here. You can choose them, either new items or plus points, etc. And that would be a bonus you would get for filling it up. Otherwise, that's how you play Ramen Inc. Who should buy this game? This is what I like to call a budget title. It's something if you can find it relatively cheap, I think you have a good experience with it. Decisions are lighter, but they are inside the game, and you're always trying to predict what will come out in the future based on what has come out in the past. It's just one of those games, and where you place things, you're gonna get a little bit of lucky on those kind of things, you're gonna have to be okay with that while you're playing the game. But at the end of the day, I think for a light game that plays two to four players, that you're gonna find something that you will experience and have a good time with, and might be a filler that fills a spot in your collection. For us, it's going to be a keeper.